What's the matter? Where's your baby? Where's your baby at? Huh? It is another snowy, wet, miserable spring Idaho day. And I spent most of the day behind the chainsaw today, cleaning up brush, cutting down trees along the sides of the road. But there's a little bit of daylight left and I decided it's a good day to take the three baby goats down and have them disbudded. If you don't know what disbudding is, it's basically dehorning at a very young age. There's about a 12 day window and if you don't get it done in that 12 day window, you might as well not do it. It can be a lot more harmful to the baby goats. I'm not gonna show it as a little bit of a violent process. I went back and forth on whether or not we even wanted to do it, but truthfully, it's better for the goats that they not have their horns, especially the two that will end up being dairy goats. So anyway, I'm driving down to get this done with these three baby goats, and I wanna get them back to their mamas as quick as I can. Well, we got the disc budding done. I discovered on the drive down that Coco's baby, I think it's called a polled goat, but she has no, uh, no horns. So we only had to do two of them. It's not something I want to do regularly. It's kind of, kind of disturbing, but the idea that they're not gonna have horns and then they're not gonna injure my kids as they get older and a little bit more uh, rambunctious it's necessary on top of the the milking factor i think it's also pretty important so anyway we're headed back home
One of the best parts about this lifestyle that we have worked so hard to have is to watch our kids take an active role in the new life on our homestead. Because our kids are now officially homeschoolers, I'm doing everything I can to not only keep them busy, but to also create a little bit of distancing when necessary to keep things under control. If clearing brush and cutting down trees on the road in the middle of a snowstorm is what's required to keep things under control around the house, I have no problem doing it. The plan was to have Cedar and the kids help me with the trees and the brush along the roadway, but I could see a snowstorm rolling in. I decided to work alone and cut as much down as I could along the roadway, waiting for a bright, sunny day to dry the road out enough so we can run the tracker and chip as much of this wood onto the roadway as we cut down. Now I've been working on the tile in the bathroom for about two weeks now. Last week I tore out about 30% of the floor because I was so unhappy with the way that it laid out. What I thought would be a very easy day and a half or two day installation turned into a nightmare for a brief moment because the tile did not go down as perfect as I initially thought that it would. Now in my mind, I thought this would be as simple as snapping a few Legos together, but unfortunately the tile patterns were just not perfect. What I failed to recognize is most of the imperfections that I was hung up on would not be visible once I grouted the tile. So I put it off, worked on a couple of other projects until I finally forced myself to buckle down and figure out how to make this tile look right. Cedar could tell I was frustrated. She clarified that she couldn't see any of the issues that I was so hung up on. So I went ahead and grouted the tile and decided to see how it looked after it dried. I feel like as we're getting down to the few final things left to do on the house, they're taking way more time than they should.
Of course, I'm looking forward to working on the shop, but in the back of my head, I find myself asking myself if it's wise to be spending that kind of money on the shop at this particular moment. But I have to have a shop, and we've been saving for quite some time just for that shop. So regardless of what's going on around us, I'm gonna build my shop, but I've gotta get the last couple of things done inside the house first. After letting the grout dry, wiping it down one more time, it looks totally fine. Now I have enough of this same tile to do the laundry room but it was such a chore that I was gonna take it back and find something different. But I think now I've convinced myself to go ahead and install it. We are about to embark on the fifth year of our Red Poppy Ranch life. And in the very beginning, I had an idea that we could live comfortably in an 800 square foot house. For the last two weeks since I tore this bathroom apart, we've all been sharing one bathroom. And I'm reminded that the effort that we put into making the house nearly 2,000 square feet has become more and more important to our long-term sanity, especially now that the kids are around way more than we anticipated. Now I've talked about this before, but both Cedar's mom and my dad we're school teachers. We still believe in public school. We get asked all the time, why don't you homeschool your kids? And the answer is homeschooling is only as good as the person that's teaching it. Now that we're forced into a situation where homeschooling is the only option, of course, Cedar is doing the best that she possibly can to make sure the kids' education continues as usual. But at the same time, Cedar and I like the idea that we have time during the day while our kids are in town at public school. Since the kids seem to be able to get their homeschooling done much faster than the usual school day would take, 
I've gone out of my way to find projects that they can do on their own. We went partners with the neighbors on a couple of pigs. And one of the projects that I asked the kids to try and do on their own without my help was building a small shelter for the pigs. We've collectively decided to keep the pigs over at the neighbors, so the shelter needs to be built in a way where we can break it down and haul it over there and set it back up. I gave Rhett and Cheyenne a basic idea of what I was looking for. I went down and picked up a couple of pallets for free, gave them the tools, and tried to stay out of the way. And they turned it into an all-day family affair. The next morning, when we needed to get the shelter finished up and in place for the pigs, the kids were preoccupied with their home schooling homework, so I decided to finish it up. The kids did a great job on this. Shortly after getting the pig's shelter installed, we got almost five inches of snow. Do you want me to do my elk bugle? See if I can call any in? Okay, so I have a bunch of white beans that I've had for a couple years that we need to use. And so I washed them and rinsed them and I'm gonna bottle them because it's much easier to have them done and on hand and it's just easy to grab and go. So I'm gonna put a cup and a third in each jar. Okay, I'm gonna fill them up to the top with water and add a teaspoon of salt. Cedar continues to make the best of the food that we have around us, but it seems like the grocery stores are slowly finding their normal, although we may never see the old normal that we once had. While I work on removing the trees that are obstructing the sunlight and hanging out into the roadway, I think about the economic uncertainty that is most certainly right in front of us. As worried as many are about health concerns around us right now, I fear the real concern is the future of our economy. We are already seeing unemployment numbers at record highs, and we're really not even 30 days into this thing. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. 
Maybe the economy will be what is required to give so many that push in the right direction for starting their own business or pursuing that one job they were so passionate about, but life got in the way. I can only hope for the best and truthfully, the recession that we went through about 10 years ago led to where we are now. So for this reason, I'm grateful. Is that church parking lot? Parking lot? You need parking? No. Oh, so pretty. <laughs> I got, oh. Happy birthday.